My dear listeners, do you need a hand to hold you out of your fears, sins and failures, or a hand so strong to sustain, maintain and protect your life, family and blessings? Then you are welcome to the Regeneration Hour Radio Broadcast with Bishop Maxwell C. Corey. You are in today for another life-transforming encounter with God by His Spirit through His Word. The Bible says He sent forth His Word, and His Word healed them and delivered them from all their afflictions. As the Word of God comes your way, it is coming with power, precision, deliverance, and healing. All you have to do is to receive God's Word by faith as it speaks to you through His servants. You can now relax as I invite God's servant, Bishop Maxwell C. Corey, to preach. I bring you greetings of joy in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is another wonderful new day that our Father in heaven has made. We will rejoice and we will be glad in it. In this episode of the Regeneration R Radio Brokers, I want to bring our way part two of the message on the topic, The Cry for Mercy by Blind Bartimaeus. Our Bible reading is from the Gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 10. We will read from verse 46 to verse 52. I read, And they came to Jericho. And as he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging, And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he should hold his peace. But he cried the more a great deal, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good cheer, rise, he called thee. And he, casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto him, What will thou that I should do unto thee. The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said to him, Go thy way. Thy faith hath made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus on the way. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your goodness and your wonderful works unto us. We keep thanking you. We keep blessing your name. Thank you for your mercy that endures forever. I pray for all my listeners, wherever they be. I rebuke every hand of affliction and confusion away from their lives In the name of Jesus Christ. And I ask, Lord, through your word, speak to each of them now and let your hand be stretched out unto each of them to meet them at the point of their needs and to give them a reason for laughter in this season. In Jesus' name. Speak to us now, Lord, for we are willing to hear from you In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, back to the message. As I said before now, I will deliver part two of the message on the topic, The Cry for Mercy by Blind Bartimaeus. I delivered part one of this message in this program. We read from St. Mark's Gospel, chapter 10, verse 46 to verse 52. And in this portion of the scripture, we notice the story of how this man, blind Bartimaeus, got his miracle of healing from the hand of our Lord and Savior, 
Jesus Christ. As I said last week, when you compare the account of this miracle in the gospel according to St. Mark and the gospel according to St. Luke, you will notice what looks like a contradiction. For whereas St. Mark's gospel says, as Jesus was coming out of Jericho, St. Luke's gospel says, as Jesus was entering into Jericho, this apparent contradiction arose from the fact that as at that time, there was the old Jericho city and the new Jericho city built. So this miracle took place between the old and the new Jericho cities. So anybody can write it from the perspective that appears to him as he was entering Jericho. Whereas the other fellow says, as he was leaving Jericho. So St. Mark's Gospel specifically says that as he was leaving Jericho, or as he went out of Jericho with his disciples, that a great multitude of people followed him. And our Bible introduces to us this blind man called Bartimaeus. As I said last that this man's physical challenge, blindness, took away his name. Bartimaeus means son of Timaeus. Ba in Hebrew language means son of. So when Bible says blind Bartimaeus, it simply means blind son of Timaeus. Now the question remains, what is the name of this blind son of Timaeus? Blindness has become his name. So is it, even in our society, in our time, some folks, their challenges, physical, emotional, spiritual deformities, appear to have become the name with which they are identified. But no matter the challenge in your life, if you can come to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, He's able to heal you and to deliver you. Bible says that this blind man had a profession and his profession was begging. So he was a beggar. And Bible also gave us his office address. His office address was by the highway side. So he sat by the highway side begging and by sitting by the highway side, he was exposed to the vagaries and the challenges of the physical weather, which from time to time may be harsh on the physical body, but he had no alternative. So on that day, undoubtedly, blind Bartimaeus must have heard the unusual movement of feet around him and perhaps inquired what it was all about. And they told him, this is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The moment he heard that this is Jesus Christ of Nazareth, blind Bartimaeus did a number of things that made it easy for him to receive his miracle of healing on that day. Number one, they told him, this is Jesus of Nazareth. In those days, to make such an introduction has nothing honorable or glorious about it. Because in the first place, Nazareth was a remote rustic village within the Jewry. It was not like Jerusalem, the political, economic hotbed of the Jews. Nazareth was a remote village inhabited by peasants and people that were not considered literate or enlightened. Nazareth was such a small town that all through the Old Testament, there was no mention of that name, Nazareth. 
So when they said, this is Jesus of Nazareth, it was not a big introduction. It's like saying, this is a pastor from one remote unknown village in your environment. So the crowd or the people that introduced Jesus to blind Bartimaeus did not do any honor to Jesus on that day. As at today, if we hear Jesus of Nazareth, that's a big name. But as at that time, to hear Jesus of Nazareth, it wasn't a big name. So they just identified him with his remote village. But blind Bartimaeus changed the narratives. He did not call on him, Jesus of Nazareth, have mercy on me. No, he, by revelation, address Jesus Christ as the son of David, the Yeshua Hamashak, the Savior from Yahweh. He said, Jesus, thou son of David. That's the royal title of Jesus Christ. And the title that he will answer when he sits on the throne of David to reign on planet Earth for 1,000 years. Now, in those days, the Jewish religious leaders didn't want anybody to recognize Jesus as the Messiah. They felt his background, his person, his family name did not qualify him to be addressed as the son of David. The Sanhedrin, which was the apex ruling body of the Jews, political ruling body of the Jews in those days, had already taken a decision that anybody that says Jesus is a Messiah should be excommunicated from their synagogue worship and from the temple. That was why Nicodemus, a member of the Sanhedrin Council, came to Jesus by night in St. John's Gospel chapter 3. He didn't want to come in the daytime when people will see him and identify him with Jesus. So on that day, whereas people said, this is Jesus of Nazareth, blind Bartimaeus went ahead of them and addressed Jesus by his royal title and said, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Now, when you want God to show you mercy, when you want Jesus to deliver you and save you from any affliction, you do not come to him as a mere great philosopher, a good teacher or a good man. No, he is the son of God, the word of God that is God himself. St. John's Gospel Chapter 1, verse 1 says, In the beginning was a word, and that word was with God, and that word was God. By him all things were made, and without him nothing was made that was made. You must come to him as God, come to him as Savior, and then he will save you. You do not come to him as one of the prophets that came to planet Earth or as one of the philosophers that passed through this planet Earth. If you have that mindset, you will remain in bondage and in spiritual blindness. So on that day, blind Bartimaeus addressed Jesus properly and cried out to him and said, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. When the crowd heard him shouting, they tried to stop him. They said, shut up. But blind Bartimaeus was voicing out words which heaven cannot ignore. Number one, as I said, he addressed Jesus as the son of David. Number two, he cried out for mercy. Listen to me. The cry for mercy is a prayer anybody can make on planet Earth and God will hear that person. 
For God to answer the prayer of a sinner, it is a privilege. It's not a right. But for God to answer the prayer of a child of God, born again through faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, it is a right and a privilege. But if it is a sinner, the prayer of a sinner is an abomination. That's what the Word of God says. But at any time, any sinner or any human being cries out and says, God, have mercy on me. Even if you are at the dying point, God is bound to respond to you because God's response to the cry of mercy unto any human being physically alive on planet Earth is a right and a privilege. The mercy of God is located within the sovereignty of God. Mercy means showing kindness to a person. It is the withholding of the punishment or affliction due, appropriately due, unto a sinner. Unlike favor, where you receive what you are not qualified to receive, or grace, where you are empowered to be or do what you wouldn't have been able to be or do on your own. Now, when it has to do with mercy, God dispenses it without giving explanation to anybody. That is why you can see some people, politicians, businessmen, that you may call people of terrible characters. But God shows them mercy in one area or the other of their need. And you will be wondering why should they enjoy such favors and help from God. In Romans chapter 9 verse 15, God said, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. And I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. He doesn't owe anybody any explanation for showing mercy to another person. Whether the person that received mercy is a good guy or a bad one. It is according to the mystery of election and the pleasure of God. And so, anybody physically alive on planet Earth, if you can cry out to God and say, have mercy on me, and you cry out from the depth of your heart, God will show you mercy. And the best cry for mercy is to say, forgive me my sins and save me. On that day, blind Bartimaeus cried, have mercy on me. The Bible says, that Jesus stood still. He stopped moving. Can you imagine that? The cry of a neglected blind man begging on the highway was able to stop Jesus. Bible says Jesus stood still. When a king stands still, it's a sign that there is somebody to be honored. It's a sign that there is something that deserves serious attention that needs to be looked at. Have you seen governors and presidents of different places? When their national anthem is being sung, they stand still. They don't sit. They stand still until it's done. So on that day, there is an anthem that heaven cannot ignore. The cry for mercy. As blind Bartimaeus cried out, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still. Today, I want to talk to somebody listening to me. It does not matter how people judge you or rate you. Some may have classified you as a terrible character. But I come with this message from the heart of God. He has not given up on you. 
If you can cry out to him, have mercy on me. He will have mercy on you. He will wash away your sins. He will write your name in the book of life. He will give you the power to be his own child. He is still interested in you. I do not know how many out there who are sick in body and you have received a medical report that presents your case as a hopeless one. I encourage you. You can cry out to Jesus Christ today and say, Lord, have mercy on me and heal me. The cry for mercy qualifies you for the best gift and blessings from heaven. I repeat myself. The cry for God's mercy in your life qualifies you automatically for miracles and the best of blessings from heaven. And so today, it does not matter who you are does not matter the extent you've gone in sin. I want to encourage you to turn to the God of all mercies and comfort. And he will show you mercy. Lamentations chapter 3, verse 22 to verse 25 says, It is of the lost mercies that we are not consumed. Because his compassions fell not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him. To the soul that seeketh him. Today, can you seek God through the cry for mercy? If you want to give your life to Jesus, you want God to show you mercy and forgive you your sins, you want him to heal you your sick body, open your mouth and talk to him now as I briefly pray for you. Father, I pray for all that listen to me. Any repentant sinner out there, be merciful unto them and forgive them their sins. Wash them with the blood of Jesus. Write their names in the book of life and give them the power to be your children in Jesus' name. I pray for anyone sick in body. Let your healing virtue pass through the atmosphere now. Let your hand that does mighty things rest upon them now. Let them receive their miracle of healing to the glory of your name. In Jesus' name, amen.